You know what uh, fascinated me about you is that I can a bit relate. I got into it all a little late. You were not someone who was aggressively doing improv and trying to act when you were a kid, right? No, I, it wasn't really in my uh, atmosphere at all. There was no talk of like, do you want to go to like a theater camp. It just wasn't, nobody was doing that right. where I live. That's how, and, that's for me too. Yeah. yeah. And it was, it just wasn't a thing. And I would always look at like, you know, I'm dating myself, you know, like a teen beat or a bop, whatever that bop, was it bop? Yeah. Couldn't there have just like been bop. Dynamite. <laughs> but, tiger Dynam beat. Tiger, tiger beat. Yeah. Bop. There was a bop. There was a bop. Said there but was like a bop, those yeah. magazines and it just looked so far away and like, oh, you have to like live in California and that's just like a different right. planet. I just didn't even think about it. But I think deep down I always dreamed about it, but I thought, doesn't everybody? I don't know. Exactly. It just I, wasn't something I... I, yeah. I relate 1000% to what you're saying, yeah. which is I'm thinking about this and I'm doing some shtick in the mirror yeah, by totally. myself. Were you I, reading Tiger Beat as well? I was reading. I, he was yes, reading Bob. I was <laughs> writing letters to Scott Bayo. <laughs> Dear oh, Scott oh, Bayo. Such a chachi crush. Um, <laughs> didn't we all? Mm. Uh, but uh, I still write them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, I, I just, yeah, it wasn't in my world. Yeah. And, I think what the internet has done is kind of made it look like, and this is true, it's very democratic. So you can be in the tiniest little spot in Kansas and you can do something funny and it can get it's a lot so of positive great. feedback. Yeah. And I think that's terrific. Before that, there were people like me long before you, when I was a kid doing shtick in front of the mirror and takes and absorbing stuff on television and in movies that I saw doing it in front of the mirror, but then thinking, yes, this is what all sad yeah. little boys do. But and then, then I got to go to soccer practice. Yeah. Well, I didn't <laughs> or, get to, or I don't know. Yeah, um, no soccer for me. Art class? That, mm. <laughs> <laughs> My paleontology club. <laughs> Hello, fellows. Anyone? <laughs> uh, but yeah, there was no, there was nothing, you know, you just, you thought, so I, Fully in high school and then into college thought, uh, yeah. that's not happening. I mean, I did like little, you know, I was like a munchkin in The Wizard of Oz, you know, right, right. in the back. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Just because my friends were doing it, but it wasn't, you know. But it's not like you could put that on no. a resume. So I tried. What, <laughs> number one, <laughs> When munchkin. I first came to LA and you needed a resume, I'm like, well, maybe I should write this on here. So you did. Another thing we have in common is I graduate college and I come out to LA to get started in show business. And I'm lucky enough to get a job writing on a show. I immediately tried to get into the groundlings into an acting class. And that's where I met the world of people, yeah. improvisers. Mm -hmm. And in 1985, I would tell people, yeah, I wanna do improv, and most people didn't know what I was talking about. I wouldn't have, yeah. I didn't even know what it was when I came out here. Someone was like, you gotta go to the Groundlings, I think you'd like that. And I'd never seen improv before. And then I remember my first show, Jennifer Coolidge was in it, and Mike Hitchcock, and they did improv and I was like, oh, I want to, I, I think I, I want to do that. I want to try that. And then mm -hmm. I just like signed up, but I had no, I knew sketch obviously from SNL, but improv, I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah. yeah. And to me, it was a revelation because the only thing uh, that I had kind of heard about was stand up. Right. And I remembered watching stand ups and really admiring them, but thinking that's not really what I want to do. And maybe I could figure out a way to do it in some way, but I don't want to be the only one talking. And yes. I, I want there to be, yeah. and I want to be able to play these different realities and I have that kind of brain. And then finding out, no, there's a whole thing called improv where you do that. And if your mind works that way, um, it actually is the perfect thing to do. Yeah. And so that's where I met Lisa Kudrow. That's where I met these, uh, just so many incredibly talented people. And I thought, okay, this is, this is proof to me. I loved getting up on that stage. It's a really small stage. Yeah. It's an equity waiver theater, uh, 99C, but it's where, I mean, as I said, Phil Hartman yeah. came from there. 
Paul Rubens. I mean, the list of people. Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell. Um, you know, he left the Groundlings and was never heard from again. <laughs> 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 but I mean, the list is, I can't even yeah, begin to list it. It's, it's insane yeah. how many people. It changed, uh, that place changed my life for sure. Yeah. So you're up there, you're doing the Groundlings and you're, are you working a regular day job while you're yes, doing that? Yes. What are you I doing? I had many, many a day job. <laughs> um, my favorite was I worked in a, like a floral design studio. I did like floral arrangements. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. I was a server. I worked at Universal Studios in the executive dining room. Oh, wow. I used and to so, work there and eat in that. Well, not you, the executive one. Yeah. The, but, like the, the, the one, with the, one, the nicer one where the, ex, yeah, with oh, the executive. Yeah, I, I couldn't get in that place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny because I, I think see everybody people can. and I'm like, Hey, I waited on you. Um, That's so funny. So I know. I had I had this conversation the other day where I I I mean I I think I do it just because this is how my mom taught me to be and I'm, and which is I I really try to be nice to uh, anyone who's serving me but also way in the back of my mind is <laughs> like, they will be in control of show business <laughs> in three years <laughs> and you don't you know what I mean they're just and so many people have later come up to me and said yeah I, when I was uh, Jennifer Garner waited on me oh how cool when she was and this is years after she became a star uh, <laughs> she just had I a terrible so. gambling addiction and uh, no she <laughs> people were like Jennifer Garner no there was a place where you could get brunch on the Upper West Side, and I was doing the late night show. And she said I came in once, and um, she said I was nice and everything. But then I then started to read the paper, and it's like, no, we really need that table. <laughs> and she remembered this years later, and I was so embarrassed. Like you never know, you never know who's going to be there. I